Hi, my name is Reuven Harrison, and I'm a CTO and co-founder at Tufin, the security policy company. I only have five minutes to speak to you today, and I'm going to try and provide some value um, talking about this topic, which is defenders think in lists versus attackers who think in graphs. Now, if you're familiar with this topic, great. I wasn't until a couple of months ago. It was introduced to me by one of our users who was a network security manager uh, at an organization who has very large Kubernetes clusters, thousands of nodes. And I'll give you some background about this um, to interesting topic. So in 2015, John Lambert from Microsoft wrote a paper about Active Directory attacks. And he said that defenders are awash in lists of assets. And he gave examples of these lists. While attackers breach a network by landing somewhere in the graph using a technique such as spear phishing, and they hack finding vulnerable systems by navigating the graph. Who creates this graph? You do. You and your developers and your DevOps teams, but you're responsible for it. So why do defenders use lists? Not because they're necessarily the best thing for defenders, but I think it's mainly because they're easier to generate. And if you look at a lot of the security audit tools on the market, both the open source tools and the commercial tools, you'll see long lists of findings, right? Like vulnerable container images, or vulnerabilities uh, with um, source code, or vulnerabilities with configurations, risky configurations in the cluster, like a pod which is running in privileged mode, or a container which, has, uh, which is running on the host network and so forth. Uh, another type of, of uh, lists is we, that we see very commonly is benchmarks, like failed benchmarks, uh, like the CIS benchmark, for example. Now, security managers or engineers rely on these lists because that's, that's what they have. The problem is that uh, these lists are usually very long, and to remediate them requires collaboration with developers. However, developers are not measured for the security of their cluster, although maybe they would like it to be secure. They're measured for delivering functionality as fast as possible. So they will collaborate with a security engineer to some extent, but when security comes to them too often and asks too many things, uh, they, they will stop collaborating. And worse than that, I've seen security managers very often lose their own focus because of the amount of findings and you could call it list fatigue for example right too many findings too many alerts they just give up and they just leave it or maybe they'll just fix the the critical and high severity problems and then uh, in order to narrow down these lists you want to prioritize for example our security architect at Tufin, we have 2000 enterprise customers who use our software so security is super important for us he prioritizes according to only critical and, and high severity findings and only with the ones that are exposed externally. So the first tier of pods in the cluster, for example, the ones behind the ingress, right? Um, so prioritization is difficult, but if you use the severities in the tools, they're often not a good indication because these tools don't consider the context. Graphs, on the contrary, do consider the context. And graphs reveal the path that an attacker will follow to the crown jewels. For example, this very typical example, uh, the hacker will gain some initial access into the cluster, uh, for example, using a vulnerable application. Um, and from then, from that point, they'll use some discovery techniques to see what the network around it looks like, or maybe try to go to the API server and find some information about the cluster from there. Often these discovery processes will involve an egress connection to, to download some tools. Once the next step is discovered, there will be some, there'll be some lateral movement to another pod or an underlying layer. Privilege escalation to gain some root permissions or enough permissions to, to, to do more. And finally, exfiltration of the crown jewels, right? This, a good graph will reveal this path and allow you to, to uh, remediate it before the hacker gets access to it. So tenets of a useful graph are, it, it shows you these risky paths, combining the various factors across the cluster, but also outside of the cluster, right? So you want to see network connectivity and vulnerabilities and configurations, but also the cloud configuration itself, maybe RBAC at the cloud level, maybe firewalls if you have any and so forth. It also highlight the top priority problems. The graph won't be overly cluttered, which is very often the case. It's automatic and it guides you instead of expecting you to be the expert. To conclude, 
when you protect your Kubernetes cluster, think like an attacker. Think in graphs, not lists. Thank you.